Good afternoon, and welcome to Blind Formers. I am your host, Blind Prime, and for today, I have for you Transformers Studio Series Revenge of the Fallen Rampage. Now, Rampage is a really interesting guy because he's a crazy pogo monster. He just. All right. I'm going to start doing a separate video soon where I discuss kind of a review aspect and, you know, do a transformation video opposite of that because I use those two separate videos, a transformation and a talk about. Because sometimes, like with this guy, I have a lot to say. I have a lot to say. And it would take up a lot of time. And a few people have recommended to me that I separate these videos out just a bit. You know, the review from the transformation. So that's what I'm going to start doing with this guy. Now I mean more videos, but we're definitely going to talk about him in a larger scale because I have a lot to say. And, and to be honest with you, there is some dislike. There is some dislike. If he wasn't part of Devastator, if he wasn't part of Devastator, I don't think I ever would have got him. But let's talk about it in his uh, robot mode here. First off, he stands on a pogo stick. He, uh, he has a single point like Wheelbot, except unlike Wheelbot, he comes with his own stand. That's actually kind of crappy. So you can use the, um, the really cool, you, you can use some action figure stands to hold him up better. I just have him in his crappy, stupid stand that he came with. Which, honestly, yeah, I'll talk about that in the review. Um, so, let's discuss his height. So, he has these two big, big old arms that hang off on either side of him. They uh, actually have some cool features to them. Like, uh, he's got these really unique, posable claw hands, I guess. They're, they're kind of odd looking. And... Uh, you could definitely do a lot with him, but he's basically got weird-looking clamps. What's with Michael Bay and the clamps? Uh, the tread on one of the treads, because, you know, there's a front and back tread. Uh, so the one of those comes off on each side and can be used kind of like a, a, a tread whip, I guess. Uh, apparently he used it in the movie, and I cannot remember what part of the movie that was, but he apparently used tread whips so they gave him tread whips um so you can actually use them to carry some minifigures and and that would be a really cool feature like you know you can kind of just raise it up like like hmm yeah, he's got a bad problem of not being able to raise up his hands he's Look at that. Look at that clearance. Whoa, nope, nope, nope. That's for the review. That's for the review. We're going to talk about that. Uh, but there we go. He's holding up a bumblebee. Get out, get out of this grass, bumblebee. All right. So bumblebee, uh, let's take him off the stand for an appropriate size. So I'll have to hold him upright. Bumblebee stands to minus the stand. Um, the, yeah, well, on the back side of Rampage here, there's a, uh, there's the part where the driver for the bulldozer sits, and then that entire section is kind of textured, so if you feel above it, there's a joint that, that's right below both of the arms, and that's the area where Bumblebee's head connects. Like, that's how tall Bumblebee is in relation to him. Good old Bumblebee. Go over here and be cool. All right. Now, I'm going to put him back on the stand because now we're going to measure him. Well, actually, we're measuring without the stand. So, without the stand, we need to see about how tall you are. And you, sir, are... There we go. Lay down. 
17, 18, 19, 20. So he's 20 studs tall without the stand. And uh, the stand only adds one stud. I can already tell by its feel. So 21 studs with the stand. Not, not, not too bad. Not too bad. But he's a Voyager. So I expect an average of 22 with Voyagers. I mean, long haul is 22. Now, let's get into the transformation for him. And this is a part I dread. Because he's both got a simple and complicated transformation. And I'll describe it as we go. So first off, you want to remove the, uh, the stupid bouncy thing. And that pogo bit actually folds upwards and stores into the back end of the cockpit for the bulldozer. Once that's done, you want to then take his head and you want to fold it down. That's all. It's uh, not really going to do much there. It's just going to kind of fold. Well, no. You don't take the head and fold it down towards the ground. Sorry, my bad. You take the head and hold it straight out so that it makes a 90 degree angle with the rest of the body. And then you rotate all of that on the hinge that I described as being where Bumblebee's head met. And that will make the blade that was on the back of the guy show up on the front of this bulldozer. Now, that's complete. You can see it's basically done. And this is where the difficulty lies because there's a lot of really, really hard to get spots. So let's transform the arms. First off, reach inside the each of the arm below the, uh, you know, where the whip would go over, the tread whip, ooh, treadful. Uh, you want to move the little wheel bit up because there is a caster wheel there that's on a little hinge with a small peg. So you can push it in and it will click shut and then you pull it out. We want to pull it out now because we are about to put this tread over it. And we want to make sure that when we put the tread over it, we get it in such a way that that wheel sticks out. We want that wheel sticking out. Then, we're going to move it over here and lay the tread across the rest of the body of the arm. And now you will feel that the treads on the top and the bottom are kind of synchronized. Not complete yet. And this is where the difficulty in this figure lies, is actually these arms. So, the, um, on the hand bit, you know, the little claws that we described earlier, there's a one that has two claws and then there's two separate claws that only have one claw now you want to grab the two pronged claw and rotate it inwards towards the center once you have done that you want to take the topmost the uh, the innermost claw the one that will be facing towards the center of the bulldozer and you want to ro rotate that one down now this is where this may get a little interesting because you want to rotate it in such a way that it will connect with other things so and it will not interfere with mr double claw you don't want to interfere with mr two prong claw you just lay that straight across and keep it out of the sight of mr two prong claw and that will actually help stabilize some weight whenever weight is pushed on the two-prong claw. It will disperse it across this entire little, this single claw. Now, we copy the same thing on the other side, but this one is different because this time we're gonna have to merge this foot, I mean this arm, with the rest of the bulldozer. So, we find the blade first. We're going to work from that end and go down. Trust me, it's easier this way. So the blade has a little uh, bit. It's rectangular, and it has a notch on the end, and it rotates on a hinge. It's towards the bottom of the blade. You want to find that and rotate it towards the tread. Now, if you feel on your arm tread, you have this little weird 
rectangle thing that's on its own unique hinge that allows it to pop up and down. But not by much, but by a little. So what you want to do is you want to rotate this bit on the blade at the same time as you raise this bit on the arm. Rotate the, the uh, notch feeling thing that feels kind of like a rectangular peg. You want to rotate it directly underneath that bit that you raised on that's on the tread. And then you lower that bit that you raised and this part may take a minute. They don't like connecting sometimes. They are aggressive about their miscommunications. So you gotta, you gotta get them in there. There it goes. Once that gets in there, it's gonna lock down this entire tread. Now that you've completed that step and you've more or less stabilized this tread, we're going to finish it up with this last claw. Now this last claw is going to rotate counterclockwise and fit its tip, its claw tip, into the notch that's cut out of this little side beam on the side of the tread. And once that is complete, you were done with one of the arms. Let's move over to the other arm now. We're gonna copy the same thing. So we're gonna raise our caster wheel on its hinge. There it goes, caster wheel raised. Then we're going to lower the tread so that it passes, so that the caster wheel passes through the hole that's cut for the caster wheel. And we're gonna lay the tread flat on everything. We're gonna then rotate this double claw, the double prong claw inwards, as well as rotating this single prong claw inwards. It's gonna rotate down and then double prong claw. It's going to utilize it as a support structure. And there we go. Now, all we do is line up this side. So let's rotate it over here. Now we're going towards the outside of the arm slash tread. This is where things are going to get slightly difficult. You can feel around in there and use your fingers to line up all the treads. They may have become misaligned during transformation or play. So ensure that you have them lined up. Once again, you want to take this piece and you want to move it on its hinge so that it pops up just a bit. Then rotate the bar with the notch on the end that's on the this side of the blade. 100, you know, however many rotations it takes, but counterclockwise so that it will pass into this spot that we raised. And then we're going to lower that bit down. And this is where we're going to get it just a little aggressive. But once these two get in there, they always will make the treads firm and solid. And there you go. You've gotten those two guys in correctly. Now this guy is coming together. Finally, rotate this last claw. There it goes. Rotate that one clockwise. And make sure that it fits into the notches cut for it in the side of the bar because that claw on the outside is the last bit of the bar for the bulldozer. Now that both arms are complete, we go underneath it real quick and those double claws actually have a purpose other than looking cool. First off, lower both of them. Ah, ah, don't get caught in the treads. I don't make a tread full mistake. Don't make a treadful mistake, Mr. Claw. Okay. Now, we want to connect them together. It's a little easier doing it this way and a little more difficult doing it this way because of, well, constraints. I like it. I like doing it this way. These guys are not wanting to connect today. And the inevitable has happened. Something has happened. Come on, little guys. Come on. It's for the video. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it for the video. I mean, you're a Decepticon, so I don't I don't, I don't expect... I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to talk bad about you. All right. There's a notch, and there's a peg. And I've been trying to find them, and I just did. 
So one of the double things has a notch on the side of it, and the other one has a notch hole on the side of it. And the key is getting the notch to line up with that notch hole. And this may take a minute because both of these things don't like the other. But once you've got that notch and the notch hole lined up, like I just did, you are complete. And you can move your hands over it to ensure that there's nothing that has become disjointed while you were notching that hole. And that tread on this side never wants to stick properly, but that's probably due to something mis misaligned. And these Studio Series are notorious for having pieces that can get misaligned very easily. They, they notoriously don't... Oh, wait, I will save it for the review. Anyway, here we go. Here is... Oh, forgot the last bit. That's the kind of the stupidest bit. There's a switch on the inside of the blade, totally marring the look of the blade that will allow you to push the um, wheel, the caster wheel, under the blade down. And there you have it. Let's compare him to our good friend Cliff Jumper right here. Cliff Jumper. Look at that. Cliff Jumper stretches from one end of the treads to the next one. And then Cliff Jumper also stretches almost. He's, he's, he's longer then this blade is wide. Sadly, but there's our cliff jumper and bulldozer combo. Go away, cliff, go away, cliff jumper. So over there. All right, let's take a look at measurements for him. Measurement wise, he stands, or I should say sits at, all right, treads, and I'm counting the blade because it is non-functional. And that is 17, 18, 19 studs long by 10 studs wide. He's a he's a wide one. Yes, he is. And uh, before I go, let's talk about this guy for a minute. He's a, uh, as transformation goes, I'm going to count him as, as, as a five. Straight up, middle of the spectrum. He's not really that difficult. Maybe even a four. Actually, if it, if it wasn't for the weird notch bit and how everything has to kind of click together in the, in the legs and the fact that, no, 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 I can't even give it a four, uh, a five. It, it is a four. This guy is a four. His transformation sucks. I don't like it. He doesn't even have, like, elbows. What's with them in, in taking the elbows away from our bulldozer, guys? I mean, come on. I like my elbows. It's good posability. But, anyway, you guys know what to do. You know, Please hit that like, doodle, subscribe, share with anybody in your life who may be experiencing sight loss or has experienced sight loss, you know, Transformers could assist them in overcoming some of those mental hurdles. But until next Prime, I am Blind Prime. And this has been Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Studio Series, part six of my Devastator series, Rampage. Bye-bye.